In this video, we're going to look at some uh, vintage toasters. I have a kind of a affection for old toasters. I like the chrome, and uh, they look like old cars to me, like old classic cars. Um, this one is a Nat Monarch uh, Telematic. Uh, they call these floppy toasters. This was manufactured probably in the early 30s. A friend of mine got this at a yard sale for two bucks and it was in pretty bad shape. The cord was a disaster. Um, I cleaned it all up. Uh, these are wooden walnut handles, the flip down handles, and these were missing. I had a friend of mine who's a woodworker make me some uh, walnut blanks and I fabricated these replacement handles. I actually found this one uh, a photo of it online, um, but I really couldn't place the year exactly. You can see it has the Art Deco design. It uh, also has a hole drilled here. I suspect at some point when these handles had fallen off, someone had drilled a hole and put a handle in there. Now this model has an adjustable thermostat, which in spite of my efforts of cleaning it up does not work. And it also has an off-on switch, which does work. Um, like I say, the cord was a disaster, so I took a cord from another toaster that was way too long and uh, spliced this one in. And I also replaced, this is a brand new uh, a replacement end, but it's modeled after a vintage one, so that works. And also, this one had a, a little gem here, so that when the coils are on, it glows red. And this was missing, and I actually got this from an old uh, waffle iron to replace this. Um, this is a very simple toaster, aside from the thermostat. Uh, the coils are just arranged um, in a you know zigzag across the center. So um, we're going to test this out and see how it works. Now I, I got some sourdough bread. I don't normally eat white bread, but I thought this would show the uh, toasting effect better than a uh, whole wheat bread. So first I'm going to do is plug it in. And the way these work is you open it up and you just put the piece of bread in there and uh, fold it shut. And there's some bars here that keep the bread from actually coming into contact with the coils. So uh, since this doesn't have a thermostat, I'm going to have to flip it open and have a look uh, and see how it's toasted. So uh, let's try that. I'm going to close it up and turn the switch on. Well, actually, I'll open it up so you can see the coils heat up. You can see they're turning red. So we'll just flip the bread up on that. Maybe we'll get it, I don't know, half a minute first. When uh, electricity started to become available in houses in the 30s, uh, companies manufactured a great number of these uh, different kinds of toasters uh, for people um, to use. Uh, one of the reasons the cord was so long, I'm sure, was that most people maybe had like one outlet in the kitchen, so you needed like a six-foot cord to reach it. Let's have, flip this open and see how it's coming. Nope, it's not toasting yet. It's good and hot, though. I do wish that the thermostat worked because uh, then you can set it to a certain level and it'll turn off and you can get a consistent um, uh, performance out of it. But um, it's, it's kind of beautiful and old, so I don't mind. I'll, I'll keep it just the way it is. And then, of course, you have to flip it over and flip the bread upside down, too, to, uh, to make sure it works, to have a look and see how it's coming. Oh, yeah, it's starting to turn brown. I suppose you could just time it and then you'd have some idea with a little experimentation as to how long it would take. I turned the camera off there for a second. See how it's coming. Oh yeah, see? Toasting up nice. Go a little bit longer. You can see the, uh, the red glow. Turn the lights off. Well, it's difficult to see. Let's see how it looks. Oh, yeah. That's not bad. A little uneven, but, you know, not bad. Now, normally you would have to flip this over and do the other side, but um, it's, we've already seen how this works, so I'm going to move on to the next toaster. I uh, turn it off.
I like that it has an on-off switch. Uh, the next model we're going to look at is also a floppy type toaster from the 30s. Uh, it's a GE Hot Point. Um, I don't have an exact year on this one. I wasn't able to find uh, any information online about this specific model. But I'm guessing it's from the mid-30s. Uh, I actually got this at a thrift store in Springfield, Oregon, and it was really trashed. Uh, this was originally painted black, but uh, the, when I bought it, all the paint was scuffed off and the chrome was all stained, and it was in pretty bad shape. So I disassembled this one and did a restoration on it. Also, it wasn't working, and I suspected it was the cord, so I was able to get it for $8. Uh, the cord was in fact not working, the contacts inside the plug were bad, so I drilled out the rivets and uh, took this apart and fixed it up and then re reattached it with screws. This is the original plug on the other end now, and this is the original cord, so it's in pretty good shape. In this one, the cord plugs into these um, pins on the side. There's no switch and there's no thermostat, so this is a completely manual toaster, and I'm sure that uh, that was to make it more of an economy model. Uh, I'm sure it was quite a bit less expensive than the ones with all the fancy um, apparatus. Uh, the other advancement in this one is it has mica sheets inside to support the heating coils. And the heating coil is like a flat, uh, like a tape wrapped around the uh, mica sheet. Now, not only is that more stable and easier on the coils, but it also, I believe, reflects heat back out, so I'm sure it's very efficient in uh, heating up the bread. Uh, there's no way to shut it off, so you just have to unplug it when you want to turn it off. So I'm going to plug this in. I'll open it up so you can see the coils heat up. This one cleaned up really nice. But these uh, support bars here are shiny. That They're original. They're like 80 years old. Okay, we can see the coil starting to heat up. Got my piece of sourdough bread. I'll let that get heated up a little bit. And I'll just flip this in. I suspect this one will toast the bread a little faster because of that uh, reflective quality of the mica sheets. Okay, I've let this run for maybe 45 seconds. Oh yeah, see it's toasting up really nice. Yeah, that's much quicker than the other one. It's nice looking. Definitely deco, deco design. Yeah, there we go. And then we have to unplug it to turn it off. Now we're seeing some advancement in technology here. This is um, a uh, McGraw Electric. Uh, this is a pop-up toaster. Single slice. They called these the marketing for these was for the live alone. This is by far my favorite. Uh, it's a beautiful Art Deco design, entirely chrome. This one is in very, very good condition. It's got a couple little scratches on it, but uh, other than that, it works great. This one uses a timing mechanism. Um, you push the lever down and it winds up a spring that runs a timer, and then the timer, you know, ticks and until uh, it goes through a certain amount of time, and then it trips a lever which raises the, uh, raises the bread. And then the knob here, the adjustment knob, controls the speed of the timer. Now, when I got it, I got this also at the th uh, thrift store in Springfield. Um, the timer wasn't working, it was a little sticky, um, not surprising, again, since it's 80 years old. So I took it all apart, and I took the timing mechanism out, and it was all just one unit that bolts up into here. And I sprayed uh, carb cleaner, <laughs> automobile carb cleaner inside to clean out the gook, and then used WD-40 on it to lubricate it, and it works great now. And then put it all back together. Um, so uh, we'll plug this one in. Oh, and this is all original cord and original plug on this, so this is really a beautiful, beautiful find. Okay, I'm going to plug it in. Get our piece of bread. Now, um, I'm going to set it a little bit towards the top, and I'll just push this down. And you can hear the ticker. And then the knob controls the speed of the ticker, so if I turn the knob down, it slows it down, and if I turn it up, 
speeds it up. Now, very clever design on these. They also had a thermostat underneath is a, is a bimetal thermostat, so as it heats up it bends one direction, because <clears throat> if you had this toaster in a very warm place uh, and the timer was set at the same speed, um, it would uh, uh, not be the same amount of heating as if it was in a real cold place in the winter time, maybe in, you know, in a poorly uh, house heated with wood. So the thermostat, as it warms up, actually bends over and speeds up the timer to uh, increase the uh, uh, amount of uh, the, the speed at which it runs through its cycle. Yeah, I just, I, I think this is my favorite toaster I've ever seen. Even though it only tests one slice at a time. One of the things I find out when I take these things apart is how well they're made. Um, everything is really sturdy and and uh, there's no plastic or anything. Well, I, they didn't even use plastic, and this is like bake light for the handles. But uh, everything is really sturdy and really well made. And the fact that 80 years later, this thing still still works. So it's a testament to the quality of the work. Okay, this is warm, but it's not toasted, so I didn't have it set um, dark enough. Set it down darker. Push it down again. It's almost to the top. It's pretty wide too. You could probably fit half a bagel in there pretty easily. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's not quite done at the top, but um, I think at the time uh, the standard bread size was more about like this. So uh, this one works really well. Look at that, beautiful. Now this one is another McGraw electric toaster, Toastmaster, and uh, this is the same manufacturer as the previous one, and you can see the design is very similar. This one's a little bit later, uh, 1936 to 1939 or something like that. Um, it does have a deco on the side, it's got some little daisy patterns here, it has some scratches on it, and the base and the handles are Bakelite. Uh, a two-slot toaster. Now this one didn't work. I, I got this from my dad's estate and um, I think he picked it up from, I don't know where he got it, but um, this one, the, the ticker worked but didn't work well enough. So um, once I had taken the other one apart and figured out how to fix it, I just took this one apart and did the same procedure and now this one works well too. This is the one that had exceptionally long cord from the first one. Uh, I cut the cord in half um, and this is a replacement end. It's a modern one, but it looks like uh, the same shape as the original ones. So uh, let's see how this one does. I'm only going to toast one piece in here. No sense in wasting another slice of bread. And uh, we'll set this one a little bit darker and wind the timer. Well, that's running really slow. Shut the camera off and let that one run. Okay, the handle's slowly moving up. Pretty exciting, huh? <clears throat> made any toast with these yet, so this is kind of the first I've uh, tried them, really. Okay, it's almost to the top. There we go. <clears throat> a little bit light, but we could just set that a little bit darker. And of course the same thing, the bread's a little too big for that, but certainly works. <laughs> this side's a little darker than this side, but nah, still works. Now this one has special meaning for me. This is a General Electric two-slot toaster. Um, this was made in 1952. This was my parents' uh, wedding present. And this was in my house growing up. 
all those years and uh, we used it all that time and I still use it so it works great. Um, I did have to take it apart clean it up a little bit at one point it was pretty cruddy inside. This one has a um, uh, uh, control that um, light and dark and then this one also has a st uh, stays down and pops up so I think it inhibits again it controls the amount of time um, it takes I just leave it on pops up. I'm not quite sure what that's about. I think maybe it's for a more manual control. And again, this is all Bakelite, Bakelite handles. Um, so I'm going to plug this one in. Original cord, much more modern. See, it's like a rubbery plastic encased cord instead of a cloth one. So I'll plug that in. And we'll pop in a piece of bread. Set that right about there. Put it on, pops up. Has a little squiggly uh, design on the side. No timer on this one. I've actually, over the years, bought and found several of these old toasters and fixed them up and then just given them away some friend of mine will need a toaster and I'll say, hey, you know, have a nice vintage one. It'll last the rest of your life. Uh, so I have an affection for them, for sure. There's uh, quite a lot of collecting uh, online. You can find uh, toaster forums and toaster online toaster museums and oh, it's getting ready to pop up. Oh, I put it all the way to dark. That's too much. There we go. Oh, no. Should have left it long. <clears throat> the other nice thing about this one is there's a, a manual release. So if you feel like it's, you know, gone on too long or you need to, to uh, get it to pop up, you can, um, you can just push the handle like that and it'll pop up. I didn't leave that one long enough. But this is the one I use regularly. This has been for years I've had here. Ten years I've had this toaster. Uh, and I use it all the time. Yeah, I've screwed it up now with a cycle. But anyway, that's that. Okay, I have one more. Uh, this one is called... It's also a Toastmaster. This one's called the Princess. It has the same kind of squiggly uh, pattern on the side. It's a brushed, sort of like brushed aluminum finish. And then the top is shiny chrome. Um... Uh, this one is probably from the early 60s. I uh, found this one in uh, my mechanics uh, sort of parts yard. Someone had just discarded it and uh, I cleaned it all up. Now, it, it works, it uh, toasts, but I cannot get it to pop up. Um, I have spent a couple of hours messing with this trying to figure it out. Cannot figure it out. So this one, unfortunately, does not it's not usable because it doesn't it doesn't pop up so um, uh, maybe I'll find another one that works and the exterior will be in bad condition and I'll take the two of them and make one that works um, these were still very well made toasters that would last you know virtually a lifetime uh, I suspect this one uh, met its fate from sitting outside <laughs> in Washington State for years <laughs> I think it just got too corroded inside and something went bad. So, but Anyway, that is my toaster collection.